I have an idea. Let's run a zip line between two ships while underway and pump hazardous fuel along it. That should be easy and <laughs> what could go wrong? Well, TAO vessels do exactly that. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. Some time ago, I had the opportunity to do some work aboard these engineering marvels, which perform underway replenishment of naval vessels, or just UNREP for short. While walking along the deck of these vessels, I was thinking about the forethought that went into the ship's design, and I realized that this was an excellent example of systems integration. Naval architects work daily as systems integrators, but it's difficult to point to any one system and show where this adds value. So today, I want to take a little trip down memory lane, show you the awesome equipment of this engineering marvel, but I also want to review the details of the TAO on rep equipment and show how none of this is possible without systems integration. To vastly oversimplify this, Naval ships need fuel and food to keep going. Unrep operations allow naval vessels to resupply without ever entering port. The basic unrep sequence allows transfer of fuel and palletized cargo in large quantities. And it stacks up like this. Step one, the ships maneuver near each other, matching course and speed. They maintain a fixed separation distance. Step two, messenger lines are sent across which then pull over heavier lines, eventually leading to large steel cables. These cable wires act like the industrial version of zip lines, one to carry the fuel hoses, which are called a span wire, and one to carry the cargo, which is called a high line. Step three, the fuel hoses are lowered across on the span wire. These fuel hoses have a special fitting that allows quick connect or disconnect. Once connected, the TAO vessel starts pumping fuel across. At the same time, the TEO sends pallets of cargo across on the high line using a winch system. After all the fuel and cargo are transferred, we reverse the connection sequence, pull back the fuel hoses and the cargo winch cables, disconnect the span wire, the high line, and any distance markers that might be used as well. The ships are now free to go their separate ways. Now when I look at this operation, I really see the need for engineering. Don't get me wrong. This entire operation is a testament to excellent seamanship of sailors on both ships. But we are talking about unforgiving sea and heavy industrial equipment. And the most skilled sailor in the world doesn't stand a chance without the efforts of engineers. Humans just cannot react fast enough and they are not strong enough to stand up against a 12 ton swinging boom in a force 5 sea. It's not going to happen without some engineering to level the playing field. So I want to focus on the systems integration that was necessary to bring the industrial world back into the realm of human capabilities. Right, we want those ships to come alongside each other, not collide with each other. To avoid a collision, before those ships ever approach each other, the naval architect goes to work. Operating in such close proximity takes immensely skilled seamanship, but the best mariner in the world can't do a thing if their ship gets overpowered by the sea. The naval architect first has to perform sea keeping studies to investigate the relative motion between these two vessels under different storm conditions. How strong will the waves push against the hull? Do the engines and rudder have sufficient power to push back and correct against those waves. The naval architect takes all of these questions and defines those safe operating limits for the ships. This is the type of work that DMS can do with systems integration and sea keeping studies. You start with a general question, you add in some environmental information, and you generate safe operating limits at the output. Sometimes safety also requires the naval architect to warn you about unusual conditions. You see, as those two ships approach one another, the two hulls generate a suction force between them that tries to pull them even closer together. This is very similar to the Venturi effect of wind accelerating between buildings in a city. 
And that's something that will never occur with ships in open water. And this is a prime example of the dangers of industrial scale ships. If the crew are not expecting it, it can take them by surprise before they have a chance to correct. Part of the job for the naval architect is to consider these extreme scenarios, anticipate the danger, and check that the vessel has sufficient power to hold against that suction. Due to these safeguards, the crew know about the danger, and they can skillfully hold against it. The fuel hoses demonstrate another great example of system integration and safety. This system starts as a simple enough idea, zip line with a rubber hose underneath it. But when you amplify that idea up to industrial scales, the risks also increase. These fuel lines are not small. How much do they weigh and what damage can they do? A lot. That fuel probe is made of solid steel. If we were to let it run speeding out of control down the span wire, it could smash straight through someone's skull and land on the other side of the bulkhead. For the safety of the crew and the ship, we need to control the motion of these hoses at every point of deployment. All those saddle winches and messenger lines are safety features meant to hold the hoses in check, prevent them from building up too much momentum. But what are the requirements for those winches? How thick of a line? The naval architect steps in again, listing a host of specific details such as wire size, wire length, yada yada yada. They even designed the location and foundation for the winches and different operational scenarios. All of this is taking the overall idea of what the unwrap system needs to do for the fuel hoses and turning that into specific engineering specifications to go out and select an individual winch from a supplier. Now, when you're designing this ship equipment, the goal is to quantify the different environmental and operational demands. Quantify was the key word there. And this is not something that's very easy. I want you to picture these two ships traveling alongside, refueling. What do you see in your mind's eye? Is it a simple sunny day with the beautiful breeze blowing and the birds chirping? Because that's not what I see. What I see is a storm blowing with white caps and sailors holding on to rails trying to make sure they're not knocked off by the waves. The challenge for systems integration is to start by imagining the worst scenario possible, check that that scenario remains reasonable, but then the real key part is designing to that, turning that imaginary thing into a quantifiable reality, assigning hard numbers to describe the imagined worst day of your life. Let's talk about another neat part of that on rep system. Another impressive innovation is the Highline system. First, it addressed the issue of managing cable tension. In the figure on your screen, the two ships are very polite. They stay a fixed distance apart. But in reality, they move back and forth a few meters. Well, small movements on ship scale are actually huge when you're talking about the limits for steel cable. Steel cables don't stretch very much. This small ship movement could easily stretch that cable past its breaking limit. In steps system integration with the naval architect again. Their job is to understand the limits of the machinery and pair that against the demands of the environment. Okay, we need to quickly adjust the length of the high line, compensating for ship movements. Ah, but a normal winch can't react fast enough. So, we add a ram tensioner into the mix, which is designed to rapidly adjust the cable length and maintain a safe tension on the high line. Side note, the same system is also used with the span wire on the fuel lines. And I just have to tell you about this system right here. Sometimes system integration is about solving simple, practical problems. The cargo normally gets sent across on pallets. Uh, the way this happens is a forklift brings it over to the Highline system, drops it down on the deck, which means it starts sitting on the deck. Oh, but we need to transfer it onto the Highline. We need some way to lift the cargo off of the deck and suspend it from the Highline trolley. Well, do you plan to lift that with your bare hands? This cargo weighs several tons. We need some sort of crane to lift it from the deck and transfer it to the Highline system. 
and the Unwrap equipment has a beautiful solution. So rather than installing a whole separate crane, just turn the high line into a crane. See, the TAO can adjust the height of the transfer head, which then lifts the trolley and its cargo above the deck. Once suspended from the trolley, the high line sends the cargo across. This simple system design is great. It improves cargo transfer speeds and means one less machine that the crew has to maintain. You know, with these larger projects, the naval architect tends to act more as a generalist, translating the requirements and sharing information across disciplines. Don't underestimate the value of an adaptable engineer who knows a little something about everything. That is also part of systems integration. Speaking of creating that common basis of knowledge, sometimes integration also requires having a piece of software to integrate your various disciplines. Uh, one example of this is the ship constructor software that actually allows multiple different disciplines to work together. They can filter the views to look at just their own subsets, but the software itself will actually still incorporate changes from other different disciplines. This is part of systems integration, letting people become aware of what's happening in different departments. If you want to learn more about the ship constructor software, I'll leave a link down in the description below. And full disclosure, the developers for Ship Constructor did leave me an evaluation version in exchange for mentioning their software on this video. You know, systems integration can be difficult to recognize. As we examine a ship, you're never going to identify any single machine that's labeled designed by systems integrator, but the systems integrator provides key support. They define operational limits, they provide environmental requirements for individual machines, and they determine the worst case scenarios involved for safe operation. If we widen our perspective a bit, stop looking at individual machines, and instead look at the entire vessel, then the system integrator makes sense. They are the difference between a harmonized ship and just a pile of components. Thanks very much. I am Nick the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.